Yeah, this is a Bristol Road Christian Group meeting. Um, there's a couple of things I have to tell you because the room's quite full. If there's a fire, you go out through the door. <laughs> there's the door, don't hide, there's nowhere to go in. So go out through the door if there's a fire and uh, well, I don't know where else. Any other health and safety, Matt? Bring the, bring, the, bring the fire brigade to the fire. Yeah, bring the fire brigade. If anybody should collapse at all. But anyway. <laughs> uh, right. I'm uh, really pleased to date that this meeting's been done because um, a few weeks ago, a few months ago now, we were talking about the fact that it was the 75th anniversary of the May Days in Barcelona, which I think is, what's the date? May the 3rd? Uh, yeah, more well, that week. That yeah. week, really. So we are in that week, 75 years ago, which um, I was chatting to Lee the other day and he said, you know what, when we were really young, right, it wasn't that far away. Because we were thinking we probably st first started talking about this in 1984. 84, I think, 83, 84. So we we saying, God, that's a long time ago now, it's nearly 30 years ago. And actually, we take, you know, 34 years off from that time, it really isn't that long ago. So we were getting romantic, basically. We were, but with each other. With each other. Mm -hmm. um, we, as I said, we were youngsters. We, Lee got me to read a book in 1984, which he was um, ranting about at the time, and reading every morning when he was having his um, peanut yeah. butter on toast. And that was a book called um, called um, Duritty, The People Armed, by Abel Paz. It was like, probably the first thing we read about, I think about the Spanish Civil War, where he started to get into the actual internal politics of the revolution and stuff like that. And we realized that it was a lot more complicated than perhaps we'd been led to believe. Because um, there's a lot of romanticism about the Spanish Civil War. There's a lot of kind of victim romanticism. There's also a lot of political romanticism, certainly from, from the anarchist side. So today's talk's really about, not talking about the the great victories of the revolution, but talking about what happened to that revolution, the social revolution that broke out in July 1936. So what we're going to do today is we're going to, Lee's going to do an intro, we've got a couple of bits of film from a really important pro, uh, series you might remember from the early 80s called The Spanish Civil War, made by Granada, which I saw when I was young, and certainly one of those programmes, episode number five, <laughs> I was told reliably the other day. We're going to show a couple of bits of today. It really had a big influence on me when I was young because it was amazing to actually see the footage of what was going on in, in Catalonia, you know, both in July but after that as well. So I hope you're as inspired as we were when we were young, as we were learning about history that had been, to a certain extent, covered up, both by the victory of the Soviet Union, effectively, and its, its control over information among through the Communist Party, but also, more importantly, suppressed in the West as part of our revolutionary history in Europe. So that's what inspired us. But we also, I know you've been thinking about this for a long time, this stuff around the Friends of Duritty and May Days in Barcelona. So I'm really pleased that Lee today is going to kind of talk about it and I haven't got much else to say except um, that's it. All right. All right. Thanks, Roger. All right, a friend who's written in May Days, okay. Uh, if you ever read any books on the, May, on, and the Spanish Civil War, uh, not, not, not so much just, you know, even obviously the uh, academic books uh, like Hugh Thomas, um, there's another one by Anthony Beaver. And when they chat about the May Days, it's generally, they can have a 500 page book and they'll, break, they'll gloss over it in about 10 pages. And you think, well, um, well, you kind of expect, I suppose, of those sort of people because they've got a, a bourgeois agenda, which is basically that the Spanish, it wasn't a Spanish revolution, it was a Spanish civil war, the working class didn't have their own agenda. They were basically following either the, this popular front government or, you know, or, or the, the fascist side. Um, whereas really from our point of view, if you call yourself an anarchist or a revolutionary of any sort, it's probably the most important bit of the Spanish civil war, the Spanish revolution. And um, in fact, uh, the May Days, 500 were killed and 1,500 wounded, which is more than what was, um, um, well, more casualties in the first week of the military uprising on uh, the 19th of July. Um, so you have to kind of ask yourself, why did the anarchists and why did the left kind of gloss over the May Days? And, and in particular, the Friends of Deruti. Um And you kind of get a feeling that, especially those people who are very pro-CNT, pro-syndicalism, they really don't want to mention too much about the Friends of Duruti because the Friends of Duruti, um, 
brought up uh, the hypocrisy and, the, and basically the traitorous behaviour of the CNT leadership and the FAI leadership. Um, so, um, uh, so a lot of the books really sort of just chat about the popular front and how um, the working class were fighting for the Republican government. Um, where, 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 really, the, um, I mean, that, that, that's the one of the big myths, really, that uh, the generals rose up against this uh, left-wing government. The generals really uh, didn't need to rise up at all against the government because the government was no threat to them at all. The Popular Front government was, you know, an anti-working class government. Uh, it did nothing for uh, the land reform. Obviously, the peasants wanted land. Um, in fact, the only really reason that a lot of the anarchists voted or were kind of given a free, uh, a free, uh, the CNT and the FBI didn't say, you know, you don't vote on this one. They kind of let them do what they want because there were so many prisoners and they thought that if they voted for the Popular Front government, that a lot of prisoners would be released. Uh, the main reason the generals rose up was really from about 1931. Uh, there'd been a cycle of insurrections, mainly, uh, you know, anarchist uh, uprisings, although in Astoria it was like a socialist, uh, communist, uh, well, socialist kind of uprising. So really since 1931 there'd been a revolutionary situation. Um, more or less every year there'd be an uprising. Unfortunately it would just be in Catalonia or um, Astoria, so something had to be put down violently. Um, so there's this cycle of, and everybody kind of knew that there was going to be a revolution at some point. So this idea that the working class were defending this popular front government is just a myth. The reason the generals rose up was because they knew particularly, obviously if there was a revolution, they'd be up against the wall, you know, quite rightly. So um, the, 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 the general's uprising of 19th of July was against the organised working class. Um, and really, even before um, the 19th of July, the prisons were being opened up by um, anarchist groups and uh, the people, land was being taken already by the peasants. Um, and, you know, uh, one thing that's not uh, talked about much is that the, the Popular Front government, contrary to public, you know, popular opinion, was already planning on making a deal with the fascists because they, they knew the army was going to rebel, despite them saying constantly, no, 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 the, the generals aren't going to rise, everything's okay. You don't need arms to defend yourselves. We've got everything in hand. Behind the scenes, the, um, the, the, the Popular Front government, the Republicans, were already planning to do a deal with the generals. So obviously the anarchists um, uh, knew that if the fascists, um, you know, if, if the fascists or the Republican won the, the elections in February, there was going to be a war. So they started to make plans for an insurrection. Um, they'd already had their affinity groups um, and their defence committees, and they started to they started to do gun raids and uh, raid on gun shops, and um, because everyone knew if something was going to happen, um, and the government did nothing, because obviously the main reason the government did nothing, you know, I, I, as, as, we, as we know, is that the, the, the ruling class, whether they be left wing Republican, they obviously fear the working class more than they fear the, the fascists or the generals. You know, if, if we were here now in, if there was revolutionary trouble in this country, the ruling class would much rather give power to the BNP or power to the EDL than let us, you know, than let us deal with this situation. So, um, so anyway, the anarchists are, um, are are getting ready to, you know, for for this war that's going to happen. Um, and, and it's interesting to to note that wherever um, when it eventually did kick off with the generals. Wherever the anarchists and the working class organised on their own, independently of the government, and uh, uh, wherever they organised them, themselves, they, the, the revolution was successful. You know, for example, Barcelona, Madrid, Valencia, all those places where they didn't do a deal with the with the with the left, with the, with, the, with the government. You know, the revolution was successful. All those places where they waited for the government to do something about it, like Saragossa, which was an anarchist stronghold, they naively believed that the you know, the, the, the politicians there, and obviously um, the fascists took over and they were all executed. Um, so, you know, for example, in Barcelona, you have, you've got a situation there. Uh, it, to, really, Barcelona by then was like an independent state. Catalonia was more or less independent, similar to maybe, say, the Welsh Assembly. Um, more or less independent. So right up to the 19th of July, the, the head of the, the 
what they call the General Attack, which was the, the lo local government, this is bloke called Lewis Companies. Now, um, he didn't give no weapons to the working class at all, um, despite CNT and the FAI. Uh, for those who don't know, CNT is the anarchist trade union, the FAI was an anarchist group. Um, they're constantly saying there's going to be an uprising, uh, we need guns to defend ourselves, and um, they were given no weapons at all. Um, so on the day of the um, on the day of the the the, the uprising, the, the, when the, the generals um, rose up, uh, the, the anarchists uh, went out went out to the docks, seized a lot of weapons, um, issued a general strike, and um, almost single handedly. Um, you know, stop the generals from rising. I mean, their, their main victory was they, they stormed the San Andreas barracks and stole 35,000 rifles, which, if you imagine if we had that in Bristol, we could more or less run this, run this sort of city. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the CNT militants mopped up the fascists and the generals, and within two days, you know, Catalonia was basically ours. Um, now, really, to... Um, to understand about the Friends of Deruti and what happened in the May days, you really need to go back to those two days in, um, on July 19th, July 20th, to understand why the May days happened. Um, because basically, although the anarchists, um, you know, s took over the factories, they took over the land, they gave the, the land to the peasants, they, they made a couple of fatal mistakes. And the first one was, they, they allowed the government to carry on, it's, you know, and uh, it'd be like, you know, taking over Bristol, but allowing Barbara Janky to carry on doing whatever she does. Um, but really, they should have gone in there, executed all of them, or at least made them work, you know, or put them down a mine, make them do something worthwhile, but they allowed them to continue. So really, um, you have a bit of a dual power situation going on, where they, they've seized the land, they've seized the factories, but they haven't really seized power and uh, for the anarchists, seizing power wasn't something that they really even considered. And uh, the French jury quite often were critical of the fact that the, the anarchists kind of thought that, um, you know, by seizing the land and the factories, that would be enough. But unless you really wipe out the government, then you're allowing them, in, in a way, you're allowing them to uh, regroup and stuff. So, um, and, and also, you know, it seems quite, um, it seems quite un-anarchist to say seizing power, but when you've got eighty percent of the workforce on your side, um, you know you really got um, no excuse but not to seize power because you know the, the people are already doing the job; they're already um, you know running the place. Um, so um, instead of seizing power, uh, the, the, the general attack and Lewis companies summoned the CNT. You have to remember that he hasn't done a, a stroke. He hasn't done anything against the fascists. He just sat there in his office. And the cheeky fucker summons them to his office and says, OK, all right, you've done all the dirty work. You've had X amount of people killed. We'll, 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 um, we'll share power with you. And um, the CNT, unbelievably, uh, go along with this deal. Now, now, their reason for doing that was, one, naively, they thought, we, well, we'll set up an anti-fascist front with all these other, uh, you know, with the communists and uh, the socialists. Even though the communists and socialists had no working class base at all in Catalonia, you know, the CNT just should have seized it for themselves. Um, uh, so they, they set up this, this thing called the, the, um, the, anti, the Central Anti-Fascist Malicious Committee. Uh, and this wasn't a revolutionary group, it was a, basically a class collaboration uh, group because you basically got counter-revolutionary groups, there, the Stalinists, for example, uh, and bourgeois groups like the, 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 the Catalan nationalists. Um, so basically, really, you could argue they, they wanted to, the CNT are acting in a counter-revolutionary way because they should have wiped them out and, you know, and pu pushed on with it. Um, and also they made some other terrible mistakes. They, most of Franco's troops were coming from Morocco, uh, so they, they should have initiated some sort of revolution in Morocco, which they, they, they could have done because they had contacts there, but there was this idea that uh, we shouldn't outrage France and, and England, who had a lot of colonies there, that they, they should, um, you know, basically just go softly, softly and have a, have a quiet revolution, but not be too public about it. Um, uh, the other big mistake was they, they never seized the gold reserves. 
and, and that would cause a lot of problems later on when they're on an Aragon front and they've got no weapons. Obviously, if they'd have seized the gold, they could have paid for, you know, there's there lots of scummy arms dealers more than happy to sell them weapons. Um, so they should have seized the gold reserve, but we'll discuss that later on. Um, and so you get this, um, so should we watch a bit of the film of yeah, July 19th? Just watch and, um, first, yeah, but now in July 1936, the ecstasy and hope of revolution dominated men and women. Everything had changed, even in the bullring. The matadors put away their brilliant uniforms, and his street clothes raised the clenched fist. Catalonia was the anarchist stronghold. Here, the revolution was more profound, more extreme. By the end of July, anarchists who had seized weapons to defeat the rising dominated the city of Barcelona. It was a moment anarchist militants like Josep Costa had been waiting for. But in these moments, when it's produced the trencament, when the society is revenged, at that moment, when society burst wide open, there was such tremendous enthusiasm among the working class, and this was channeled through the unions, the parties, everywhere. People participated with such enthusiasm, with such vitality, that it's very difficult to describe it now after so many years to examine that situation coldly. But I do have to say that among the said, now's the time to destroy all that has been oppressing us. The Catalan government ruled only in name. All structures of power collapsed. Churches and monasteries were burned and looted. Helpless, they were part of the anarchists. But true to their principles, they refused it. The anarchists believed that out of this revolutionary explosion, the people would create their own free society without state, church, or capitalism. Federico Mancegni was a famous anarchist orator. Had we taken power because we were the majority, it would have meant betraying a pact of common struggle we had, in a way, sealed with the blood of so many of our men from many different sides. Communists, socialists, syndicalists, and above all, anarchists. It would have meant betraying that pact and doing in Catalonia what Lenin and Trotsky had done in the Soviet Union with the takeover of power by the Bolsheviks. We didn't do it and we have been criticized many times for it. With hindsight, who knows, perhaps, perhaps we should have done it. Some anarchists now feel that their refusal to take power was the beginning of their undoing. At that time, the anarchists had no doubt about their main objective, to defeat fascism. But for them, the campaign was not just against the army rebels, but against capitalism itself. While the columns surged out to defeat the enemy, Committees of workers in the town struggled to construct a new order out of the confusion. At that time, it seemed impossible to solve those initial difficulties. But looking back, people really showed a lot of common sense. Everything was improvised. You could call it a miracle. Despite the religious meaning of the word, it was a miracle achieved by the... As the chaos subsided, this new revolutionary society began to function. Much of the Catalan economy was now being run by the workers themselves. In Barcelona, trams and cinemas, factories, department stores and even greyhound tracks were run by their own employees the trade unions sought to food supplies. 
Union lorries drove out to the villages with goods to exchange for food. Barter, not purchasing, kept Barcelona fed for the first weeks of the Civil War. In some places, money itself, seen by anarchists as inherently evil, was abolished. Shopping was done with vouchers, issued by local committees. What do these vouchers represent? Well, they had to represent hours of production. The hours spent by a carpenter building a piece of furniture. Or the hours spent by a peasant harvesting, working on the fields. Everything was calculated in hours of production. The peasants liked it because it meant making them equal to the industrial workers, making all work equal. Vouchers bought bread at the bakers. But they now also bought that to the Barcelona Ritz. The big hotels have been turned into hospitals. Or into canteens serving cheap meals to working class families. As this anarchist newsreel proclaimed. In sus grandes cocinas se prepara la comida para cuantos para el hotel a saciar su apetito. Amplios comedores que antes ocupaban maquilladas y frívolas camiseras, grandes financieros, capitanes de industria, aristócratas ociosos y aventureros internacionales de toda la haya, ahora están abarrotados de hombres y mujeres humildes que siguen el ritmo de la sociedad que se está creando. Barcelona trabaja y come, esa es su fuerza y su virtud. Now that the factories and workplaces were in the hands of the workers, anarchist union leaders like Josep Costa fought to start production again. We tell the workers to get back to the factory and wait for our instructions. Immediately we called all the factory owners and executives to a meeting at the town hall. We tell them, well, gentlemen, something big has happened here. You know what's going to happen, but the factories have to continue functioning. We ask you to be at work again tomorrow at whatever hour you're supposed to start. Five o'clock or eight o'clock. Agreed? Agreed. But we have to warn you, labor relations will be very different from now on. The CNT, the anarchist trade union, had been taken by surprise when the revolution began. It was anarchist militants who rallied the workers to take over their industries. When the old bosses remained, they had to take orders from these workers' committees. Nearly 2,000 enterprises were collectivized in Catalonia, the greatest experiment in workers' self-management Western Europe has ever seen. The workers now set about improving their working conditions. Free medical care and adequate pensions were introduced. But at the same time, some of the old employers were hounded as enemies of the people. All right, okay then. So yeah, I mean, um, I'm not slagging off what, what happened in Spain. Obviously, it was great. The, the factories were taken over, um, and the collectives on, you know, in the land was great. And you know, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's enough. And we look back, we think, oh well, we we, we did the job. Um, you know, we, you know, it was bad circumstances with the fascists and the Stalinists against us. But really, you know, when you look back, you think, it, you know, it could have, um, it could have been so much more because. Well, you have this situation now where the factories are taken over by the working class, great. The land's taken over by the peasants, great. But because you haven't wiped out the state, really, you could argue that it was only a matter of time, and it was only a matter of time, before the government started to get its police force back, 
And, um, and it was in the maritime before, you know, they, they, they just waited until they could attack and destroy all, you know, all, all that the working class had done. Um, and you have to kind of remember, it, at that time, because the anarchists hadn't seized the gold, um, and the fascists were being armed by Germany and Italy, um, the, the, the Republican government then, um, <clears throat> you know, the only ally, the only ally really was Russia, who was pouring in money, you know. And, and so what happened was, you have a, a situation where the work, the anarchist working class, um, you know, running out of weapons, Derut has gone off to the Aragon front, uh, and, and also you have this situation in Barcelona where um, all the best militants went off to the front line and the more liberal ones, you know, the more middle class, not so extreme, stay in the city and gradually, um, you know, it's only a matter of time, you have a bit of a dual power situation where um, the, the state is just waiting for the opportunity to uh, destroy everything because obviously they didn't want a revolution because... Um, you know, they, they don't want the, uh, the working class, um, uh, you know, taking over everything because um, there'd be no need for them and, you know, we won't, you know, eventually they, you know, we get rid of them. Um, in fact, uh, Lewis Companies uh, famously said, um, yes, it's great the fascists have been defeated, but now we've got uncontrolled uh, armed riffraff on the streets running things. So, you know, so it was only a matter of time before uh, he wanted to deal with that and, um, you know, with the help of the Stalinists. So you get a situation from July 19th to May where there's a battle of power going on where the government and Stalinists are gradually taking away you know, all, all the gains that the working class had made in July. Um, basically for the mistakes of the CNT and FBI, not, not seizing power. Now when I say seizing power, if I'd have heard an anarchist say seizing power when I was 19, 18, I'd have thought, well surely that's just as bad as the communists, you know, you're seizing power. Um, well, I'm not talking about uh, seizing power for a, a small party. You know, you have to remember in Catalonia, 80% of the working class were in the CNT. And immediately as the revolution started on, um, on July 19th, they'd set up committees. It was, for every factory, there was a factory committee. There was committees of militia men on the front. There was uh, committees of peasants. And all that, all that uh, what, by saying power, what I mean is that all those that people had to do was just, uh, you know, um, organised together, get a delegate from each factory, and uh, what the French jury really called it was a revolutionary junta, uh, which sounds quite frightening, you always think about like Argentinian military men or things like that, but all, uh, the Spanish definition of junta just means basically like a council, you know, so you'd have all the delegates in the factory, well one delegate from each factory, they'd meet up together and they would decide, you know, what was going on, and obviously they were all recallable, so if, if someone got too carried away with their power, then they would be instantly recalled, so well, it's by saying seizing power, that's what I kind of mean by that. Um, so basically, yeah, so, so the Stalinists are waiting, um, and, uh, and the bourgeoisie and, and the Republicans are waiting for the opportunity to get, to get uh, Barcelona, you know, to get the working class out of the way, and then they can, you know, take power over. And there's a famous quote from uh, this uh, uh, communist leader, Comorero, who said, uh, Barcelona must be taken before Saragossa. Now, what he meant by that was, just, you know, let's not get Saragossa, because Saragossa was the anarchist, another anarchist stronghold, which was taken by the fascists, which obviously Drutti was trying to capture. Um, and what he meant by that was, forget that, don't bother giving them any arms, don't supply them with anything. Um, we need to take over Barcelona first, you know, wipe the anarchists out and, um, and, and we take over instead. So by the end of September, the general it dissolves the uh, malicious committee and uh, goes back to a normal local government. And, and it, then you start to see the rot really set in with the CNT leadership because free anarchists join the local government. Um, and, and by then you have a situation where the CNT leadership and the FAI leadership are no longer um, recallable by the, the, you know, the, the ranking file. And you get people like, um, she was on there a minute ago, Federica Monsani. Who, who wasn't even a CNT member because she had no boss. She came from a privileged. Um, she was like a fam she came from a very famous anarchist privileged background. She was an intellectual, and, and all those people who rose to the top in the CNT, none of them have actually done any fighting. You know, the people like Deruti who did all the fighting had, had gone on to the Aragon front, and basically Barcelona was left with all these CNT bureaucrats, basically who were, were um, you know basically acting in a counter revolutionary way. Um, so the, the Aragon Front stops, it's got no arms, 
Um, and then, you know, like I said, there was this plan by De Ruti to go, go to Madrid. You know, it, it, it got really to the final stages plan. He had 3,000 men ready. He had, obviously, the CNT railway men had a special train. They were going to go to the Bank of Spain, seize the gold. And the gold in Spain was um, the second largest reserves, probably from America, I suppose, you know, second to America. So they had a massive amount of gold. They could have bought anything they wanted. You know, there was lots of arms that he was willing to sell to anybody. They could have seized the gold. Um, and on the day before this plan was going to happen, and, and it could have succeeded, the, the CNC leadership basically shit themselves and said, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. We don't want to risk a civil war within a civil war. Which is a bit naive, really, because if they'd have only looked at what happened in Russia with Yanni, his, you know, they, they should have really knew that you know, the communists, uh, the Stalinists, uh, were eventually going to try and wipe them out anyway. So, you know, much better to wipe them out first. Um, so um, then we get to October, the militias are ordered to dissolve. And so um, in the Deruti column and the, uh, the Iron column, another famous column made up of ex-prisoners and stuff, uh, his uh, anarchist column working from Valencia, um, they obviously don't want to turn into a regular army with, because the militias were basically um, you know, quite egalitarian, the, the, off of the, you know, the people in charge kind of thing were um, chosen to be in charge. They were on the same money, there was no, Fucking uh, salute in or any of that rubbish. It was you know it was a it was a you know a, 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 a anarchist army. Obviously the Republicans didn't want that. They wanted to restore the officers, restore you know go ev- to everything back to before July 14th. So there's this big argument in all the columns and they're having big discussions and um, you know basically they're told if you don't accept these orders then you don't get no weapons from the central government. So. So then you get a situation where a lot of the more militant ones think, fuck now, what, you know, what, what, what am I fighting for? Um, I'm not fighting for the popular government, I, I'm fighting for a revolution. So if I'm going to be put in a normal army, then fuck that, I'll go back to Barcelona, which is what they did a lot of them, and they come back with their guns. So, so you get a situation in Barcelona now where you've got a lot of ex uh, militia men wandering around pissed off with the CNT, pissed off with the FAI, uh, and you know, really pissed off with the, with the government. At, with their guns in hand, so um, so th- but then it gets even worse. In November, four anarchists join the the, the, the regional the, the, the main government. Um, her Federica Montseny, um, Garcia Oliver, Juan Perro, and, uh, and another one, um, and also Duruti, um and, and then the cheeky fuckers. They, they realise that Madrid's going to be almost taken over by the fascists, so they call the Duruti, They basically order the Duruti column to go to Madrid to save their asses. Even though none of the politicians are actually there anymore, they've all fled to Valencia because they shit themselves. Um, so Duruti dies in Madrid, so that's like a major, major blow. So the bourgeoisie and the counter revolution are getting more and more confident. Um, there was another group called the Poom, who are basically like left communists, you know, good communists. Um, they get excluded from the general added, general added added. And basically the anarchists, the rank and file anarchists, realise that that's, that's just a start. They're going to get rid of the Poom, that's a smaller party. And eventually they're going to come for us. Um, so um, hundreds of militants refuse to, to be militarised and they, they go to Barcelona. And, um, and also you have a situation in Barcelona where you have uh, district committees, which is basically, so you had it in Bristol, you'd have like a Norwest committee, a fish ponds committee. <laughs> and, and these people were a bit, and they'd been used to causing trouble for you know, decades. And, and they were a bit more, they didn't really take orders from the leadership. So they've got their own guns, they've got machine guns, they've got rifles and stuff. So you've got a situation in Barcelona where something's going to kick off soon. Um, and, and there's this continuing grap, uh, 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 gap growing between the rank and file and the leadership of the uh, CNT. Uh, and it's from, it's from these sort of people that the Friends of Deruti really come from. There's sort of two main currents. Of the, uh, the, the, main, you know, the, the biggest one was all these ex-people who fought on the Aragon Front, who come back to Barcelona with guns. And also you have this, um, people like Pab, uh, Jamie Ballias, who was uh, an, ed- an editor of Solidar- uh, Solidar Obrero, which is a worker of Solidar, which is the main anarchist paper, who have been continually saying, we shouldn't be collaborating with the bourgeoisie, we should be you know, going for a revolution. So you've got this, this milieu in, in, in Barcelona of, of you know, quite a, um, a few thousand people who really are getting uh, thinking, well, this revolution hasn't happened. You know, we're, we did all the work, we fought the fascists, and we've got no power. Uh, another one was Francisco Pelicio, who was uh, from the Iron Column. 
And uh, basically what, what they believed in was that there should be a permanent revolution, there should be a destruction of the bourgeois state, absolutely no collaboration with any bourgeois power uh, uh, political groups. And, you know, basically a dictatorship of the proletariat. Now, what, when I say that, you, always, you automatically see, you think of Russia and you think of, you know, like 10 communists running the whole country. Well, what they meant by dictatorship of proletariat was that if there's a revolution, there's no shame in saying that, you know, if we're in charge, if the working class is in charge and we have 80% of the population on our side, then we make sure that any kind of revolutionary groups, you know, don't get the upper hand. And if it means dealing with them, then we have to deal with them. Um, so, um, when we get to sort of um, March, April, the, the Stalinists and the counter-revolution are getting more and more confident. Um, they've armed, they, they've um, rearmed the police with Russian guns. And uh, anarchist workers are being daily, um, you know, um, harassed on the streets, have their guns taken away from them, having their CNT membership cards ripped up. Um, and, and interestingly, the Stalinists had no working class support at all in Catalonia. Um, despite what they said at the time and despite what they've said probably since, the communists really they never had any working class base in Spain. You know, Spain was kind of, unlike the rest of Europe and unlike England where the communist party did have a working class following. Um, you know, the, 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 the most advanced working class people in, in Spain were really anarchists. Um, so did they get, the, the Stalinists get their members from the frightened middle classes, uh, ex-cops, ex-army, and they promote them and give them good positions and um, uh, you know, obviously they get the best equipment and um, you know, ready for the fight with the anarchists. And um, like I said, there was, no, there was no arms ever sent to the Aragon Front. You know, the only arms that were in the Aragon Front was what we stole ourselves. So anyway, the, um, the French of Drury start up on March 17th um, and it was mainly like a young a lot, of, uh, a lot of people in the libertarian youth were involved and a lot of ex-militia people and a lot of miners because um, obviously they didn't go to war, they had to carry on working. Um, and, and they were massively active between March and May when it all kicked off in the May days. They were having massive rallies, meetings and um, they had 5,000 members which doesn't sound much compared to the 1 million members of CNT, uh, you know, uh, had at the time, but 5,000 people armed in Barcelona was, was quite a, you know, a, a, I mean, when we're in the, if we had 50 people in the 80s in class war, we thought we could have ran Bristol, but um, if you imagine you had 5,000 armed members, then you're quite a, you know, quite a good, a good group to have there. And uh, basically they, they fly post the whole of Barcelona at the end of April now, saying basically all power to the working class, wipe out the general ad General Adad, and demanding a revolutionary junta to deal with the situation. So you get to the 1st of May, traditionally a workers, um, you know, uh, holiday and uh, celebration. Uh, the May Day celebrations were banned by the General Adad because uh, they obviously knew trouble was coming. Now, secretly, Lewis companies, who was the head of, um, you know, the, the local government, had a, uh, a secret meeting with all the police chiefs uh, to discuss public order and security. Uh, and then you can obviously guess that, you know, he, they were planning that this was the time to finally, you know, deal with the anarchists. Um, so then you get a Sunday on uh, the 2nd of May and uh, the, 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 the telephone exchange where it all kicked off, um, there was a conversation going on between companies and the Prime Minister of Spain. And the CNT militants who, who worked there were able to, uh, you know, intervene. And, and quite rightly, because a lot of the anarchists had died seizing the telephone exchange. And it was also a good way of keeping tabs on the politicians to make sure they didn't do, you know, any dodgy deals or, um, you know, anything to mess up the, the working class. So they used to interrupt the phone calls and, and you know, stuff like that. Um, and on that day, on the Sunday, the 2nd of May, the, the, the friends had really me at this big rally. And uh, the, the speech, uh, Jamie Ballas predicts that there's going to be an attack on the workers by the counter revolution at any time soon. Um, and in his speech, he says, you know, there could be no compromise with the uh, counter revolution. This is a time of life or death for the working class. Let us not hesitate. Remember, this is just before it kicks off. Um, and if I just do this little quote from. Um, uh, this is the this is the socialist Aaron Navy minister. Um, 
is a quote he said uh, at the time, the most important task of the Republican government is to recover the reins of power. So he said that on the same day, right? Next day, on the Monday, May the 3rd, this is a famous day, uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. Should we watch the film now and then we'll, we'll, should we watch this little bit now and then we'll go to it? All right, okay. Thank you.